The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? <laughs> well, I must have never been paying attention. When you were just talking to me Do you think that you could Okay, now microphone's on If it's gonna die, it usually does it in the first The first sentence of the song, so we should be good What's gonna die? The show, you know how sometimes you start it and it just dies? If it does that, it always does it within the first line of the song So It does Once we get to the second line, I know we're good Yeah We've that shared on Facebook. Got our studio audience today, which I love. Great, that's a, it's a great looking studio audience. I'm going to say that. And I miss Murphy. When's Murphy coming back? Happy Halloween. Oh, it is Halloween today, isn't it? I'm not much of a holiday guy. Murphy's out trick or treating. I love Murphy. Uh-huh. Is he feeling okay? He's doing all right? I think so, yeah. yeah. He's doing his thing. He takes care of everyone at the house. I bet. A very special creature. That's what I. That's what I need for my health. I need a dog. A dog would make me happy. Would be the worst thing. Dogs don't argue with you about what you're watching on TV. I mean, sometimes they. Gods do. don't. Your dogs don't give you a hard time. Why didn't you call me yesterday? I didn't get a text message. <laughs> Everybody, I want Papa Paws out of my my new intern. Wow. Pressure. Here we go. Uh, uh, I didn't see. I didn't see her lips moving, and I was looking too. I heard her. She's beautiful. All right. Okay. Waiting on Diana Zaglio to get here with my lunch. Wow. She, she was here before you were, and I was like, "What? You showed up and you didn't make me a sandwich? Like you didn't bring me something? Like what is that all about?" She said, okay, fine, I'll go get you something. So that's where yeah. she is. She went to get me something to eat. Well, look what happened. Right? Now you have no guest. She went well from she well went done. from just being my friend to being a state rep to being a state senator to being the state auditor, and she's still getting me something from McDonald's. How funny is that? Ba, 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 ba. All right. And I see her girl is here, so she's, she's got to be in tow. She's almost here. All right, let's start the show, and she can come up whenever she's ready. Hi, how are you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan, here with the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, top two guys, Smoke Shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. I've got a great, great show, great guest today. First, I want to thank our sponsors, Century 21, McLennan Real Estate, the Zanny Pesh Law Office, Marsan and Sun Construction, EIS, Investigation and Gun Trading. Thank you, dear. Uh, Tomo and Shake and Seafood. I'm going to have so much fun with this interview. It's going to be great. Clear Path for Veterans, New England, AFC Urgent Care, and the list goes on and on. Pleasant Valley Landscaping, Patrick's Eatery, which is now Harrison's and... and Better Burger Bar. They keep changing the name. And uh, shout out to our friend uh, Dean Chongress, who's been not feeling well. Uh, Prime Insurance, the Doug McCurio Law Office, 11 Restaurant in Lawrence. Chris's Barbershop in Salem, New Hampshire. Enterprise Bank, W3ON. <laughs> Peralt Chiropractic, who's actually technically not advertising till next week. But we'll give him a free show today. Uh, A&J Goodwin Plumbing and Bonfire Wellness. Have you tried Bonfire Wellness Center in North Andover? Like you go there Not and like they, they give you wellness. Oh. And that's something you definitely need. You spend way too much time. You're running around the state. You're going all over the place. It's crazy. Um, I had a bunch of stuff that I wanted to just kind of touch on before the beginning of the show. But it's so seldom that we have our state auditor here in the studio. I think it's been two years since we've had you here. Oh, and, man. And you've been, you've, you've been taking. I live five minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to get on the show a little bit more. Right? Often. we got to get a little bit more. But you are right. It's just because I'm, I'm, I'm most. Mostly just, you know, in the car. Mm. I mean, I feel like half of my life is in the car these days. It's Pittsfield to Provincetown. But did you run the entire length of the state? Didn't I see you, like, running in Berkshires? I'm like, what is she doing walked, out there? Walked. Oh, you walked. All right. <laughs> yes, okay. very, very slowly, I met. Fair I'm enough. not really, I don't really keep Fair a enough. quick pace. But I did. I walked across the state uh, to raise awareness about our sunshine campaign uh, to <laughs> audit the state boy, legislature. Boy, can you tell she's a Democrat or what? Our sunshine campaign. 
It is a sunshine campaign. We're shining a light in the dark areas of state oh my government, God, my this friends is so of the Merrimack Valley. And it is great to be uh, back with with you today. Thank it you, has my dear. been too long. Uh, and for those of you who I haven't seen in a long time, I love you very much. Uh, to my Merrimack Valley friends. Let me ask Chrissy something first. Did you get the email that I sent you last night? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I found something actually really cool in relation to that. You want to see it? In relation to my email? Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Bring it up. Oh, yeah, where is it? They uh, didn't have a ginger ale, by the way, so we, we got you a Coke. You don't that's have fine. To drink that's you whatever. Else. Whatever. We tried. I just, I just recall this being a thing at some point. I just wanted to share that. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> what a beautiful Did you see that? Did you see up on the monitor? You see what that is? No, there's nobody on oh, the monitor. There's unicorn? nobody Look in the world. how pretty <laughs> is. There's nobody in the world that can get me to humiliate myself. The only person on the planet that what could get me to do something like that is Diana DeSaglio. What are you doing? What so is this? So this was at St. Patrick's that Day. That was a fun day. Oh and she was doing a song, the unicorn song, and she wanted people to like put on outfits that come out and act it out. Yeah. And the person who was supposed to be the unicorn didn't show up. And I'm just there covering it like as a reporter. I'm taking pictures and writing things down. And she goes, Tom, I need a unicorn. <laughs> and I didn't know what she meant. She oh. was going in the back and be my unicorn. I'm like... I, whenever Diana asks, I'm never going to say no to. I just had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I went in the back, and some guy puts on this unicorn outfit on me. And I came the out. Unisor- the unicorn uh, song at the St. Patty's Day. People were roaring. Celebration. People yes. were roaring. It's an, it's a, a, an Irish children's tune. Uh, and we like to have some fun there. Mm-hmm. And every, t- I every year that I go, Tommy Cuddy's like, what are you singing this year? Right. So Doing the unicorn that, song. I the always unicorn do. unicorn song, right? absolutely. We need to get some new numbers, though. Got right. to get some new... Some new jams, mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. new songs. So we'll have to figure that out, get creative for this year. So before we start in with your Sunshine campaign, um, Dave Idconsoli, a friend of mine and an advertiser, he's also a Methuen resident. He owns Pleasant Valley Landscaping Contractors. Mm-hmm. And um, he wanted me to ask you, he says, um, can you please ask Diana if she plans to audit the Department of Unemployment? They are still charging businesses COVID recovery assessment fees and rates, and, oh, and the rates are set to continue for 2026 COVID is over what is wrong with these people thank you yeah great question Dave we actually are auditing the Department of Unemployment uh, assistance right now and um, so that particular topic isn't something that the auditors had been looking at during this time period but but I think it's a great I think it's a great topic to put into the next audit Mm -hmm. full disclosure Dave it takes about a year to a year and a half to complete these audits. It's a very long, lengthy process. I have had to really grow in my patience <laughs> with the amount of time it takes to complete something. Because you want audits. it done yesterday, like I me. Do. You're like, once you want something, you want it. I, and and you know, I having been a senator too, and 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 finding out something that was wrong, and getting to get up on the Senate floor and just immediately call out something that you know we wanted to call for change on. You know, that's what I used to get to do when I was in the Senate. Now as auditor, I'm actually required by law, to follow government auditing standards. And we are supposed to follow very, very rigorous quality assurance processes and procedures uh, with the feds and, uh, you know, that are put on us by the um, uh, Government Accountability Mm -hmm. Office to make sure that the audits have integrity. So that takes a very lengthy process that the auditors go through. And yes, Dave, like you, I'm sitting there saying, I I personally want it done yesterday, um, but it does take some time. However, having said that, let's get started, right? Let's right. get started with this conversation because um, absolutely we they need shouldn't to keep... Be co- the, no government agency should be charging COVID fees at this point. It's been over for like two years, almost three years. It should be over, but the government's going to continue milking the and, average small business owner because they can. And, and we can, we can you know, start that process looking into that right now. So mm-hmm. Dave, um, Tom's going to make sure that we get in touch. Uh, thank you for the question. And let's work together. Oh, the camera's right there, by the way, if you want to. Dave, right. thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. The other thing I wanted to bring up before we get into question one, which we're going to spend all the entire show on, um, is I just recently learned that you guys can refer to the district attorneys if, like, if you find someone is mismanaging money that is state money, state grant money that goes to a community. Like I recently was, somebody leaked me a document that there was somebody in the Merrimack Valley that was under investigation for um, abusing money that was allocated for the homeless. Mm -hmm. 
And when I track down the committee that's doing the investigation for Paul Tucker's office, it turns out that the referral for them to investigate this came from your office. And I said, well, I had no idea that the, that the state auditor could refer for criminal prosecution, kind of like Secretary of State's office. And I wonder, when I see all of these stories that we publish in the Valley Patriot about welfare fraud and people defrauding the government and... How come nobody ever goes to, like, we never get that story that, like, so-and-so was arrested and is going to jail because they worked for the Department of Transitional Assistance and they were stealing money. So, we, like, you, you do a great job auditing it and then mm-hmm. telling us that people are stealing money, but then we never see it actually happen. Mm-hmm. So, it does happen. It's the fact that other agencies are the ones that are making... Uh, that happen potentially. So our office doesn't control that information. Mm-hmm. Our job is to basically find it, and then we refer it. Like you just said, we'll refer it to the DA. We'll refer it to the att- attorney general. It doesn't seem office. like they do anything. Is my point. Like you refer it, and I found out through that leaked document I got last week yeah. that that you refer it for criminal prosecution. But then I never get an, I never get a press release from the attorney general's office, and I'm on their list. I never get a press release from the AG's office from other law enforcement groups saying, okay, as the result of Diana DeSoglio's audit, um, you know, we, uh, we arrested so-and-so who works in the Department of Transitional Assistance and stole a million dollars, right? Well, I, I, I don't really think you're going to see me getting a lot of credit for the work that I do <laughs> from my colleagues up on Beacon Hill right, All right now. So fair don't, enough. don't be looking for that to be part of the tagline. The ultimate outsider. But, I love it. But what I will say is that it, it is frustrating. Um, our office doesn't have enforcement authority. Uh, so I do have a lot of folks calling and Wouldn't saying, it be great if you did? Saying, why, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Um, and I constantly remind people, we, our office is authorized under law to find the issue. Mm-hmm. And then if enforcement is needed, we do have to refer it to agencies that are law enforcement based, like the Attorney General's right. office. The Attorney General's office doesn't always choose to right. take action. Because uh, why give you credit for finding it? Well, and it's a, take, take away that, that portion of it, you know, and, and let's just focus on the, the underlying issue, which is if there's fraud, if there's waste, if there's abuse occurring, we hope that would be pursued. It's not always necessarily mm-hmm. pursued. And it is the responsibility of these enforcement agencies to decide what they're going to pursue and not pursue. We just actually, speaking of this, we, we found when we audited the Convention Center Authority recently, mm-hmm. when we found that uh, there was a 1.2 taxpayer-funded, $1.2 million non-disclosure agreement, uh, which was executed killing me. unlawfully yep. uh, by the previous administration there, that was to conceal allegations of discrimination and retaliation. It didn't go through the process, you know, it, it, one person You've been so good just, on that issue. You've been just, so good on it. Just made this decision to, you know, right. do a, a $1.2 million payout, but, but, but to attach it to a silencing agreement to right. say this is an exchange for you but not the to tell is, anybody you, what you, did. You're doing yeoman's work coming on shows like mine and going on New England Cable News and all that and exposing it, but then nobody prosecutes. Like, nobody pays a price for this stuff. That's my frustration. We is also You're found, doing what you're supposed to do, but nobody else is. We also found that there was um, unlawful contracting happening. Mm -hmm. Now we know there are bidding processes for a reason. You put out the bid, people get to bid on whatever it is uh, in in, in state government. They do this at the municipal level And we all know who's going to get the bid before they even open the bids. We all know who's going to get it because it's all rigged behind the scenes. But there is an actual process at at least that's supposed to be followed. Right. Even though there are a lot of ethical concerns that are raised um, and questions about whether or not the law should be changed, the law should be strengthened, and all those policy discussions about current law, it is important that the current law, at least at right. a bare minimum, right. be followed, right? right? Um, in addition to all the other concerns that are raised around these processes. Uh, what we found at the Convention Center Authority is that uh, no bid contracts were going out, and that that was in the hundreds of thousands of our taxpayer dollars. Uh, so, you know, original bids were destroyed. So we, we, we referred these issues to the Secretary of State's office. We referred these issues to, because for the public records, the destruction of public records. Right. The destruction of the public original records. bids that were supposed to exist. That's not okay. You're and speaking of public records, those. thank you for carrying my bill for public records through the House and getting Charlie Baker to sign my, my, my bill into law. That was a long time ago. I know, Good job but for I, you for remembering I would never, that. I never forget someone that helps me get something done. Public records reform where the legislature continued to exempt itself from the exe- public records. First thing they did, the very first thing they did is they took to the floor while you were arguing for my bill, 
and said, the first thing we should do is amend this to exempt ourselves. And I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, and then they said, we want to exempt ourselves, we want to exempt the governor's office and the courts. And the courts? Well, why don't you just let the drug cartels come in and run the whole show then at that point, right? Like, I don't get that at all. But I, I, I admire that you keep fighting for it. And I admire that you stood with me when I wrote that bill and nobody wanted to sponsor it. Like, it was you and Jim Lyons at the beginning in the House. And that was it. No one will take my calls. And in the Senate, all I had was Katie Ives until your buddy, I, uh, 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 Jamie Eldridge, like he's a foul left wing lunatic socialist. I think you just jumped in and said, "I want to help," and I was like, wow. "Holy crap! I've got I've got a, a left wing lunatic. I've got a right wing guy in Andover. This is going to be a great combination." I think what I think uh, what you know you just said highlights uh, something really important. It's that you had somebody like Jim Lyons and Jamie Eldridge mm-hmm. uh, working on a transparency initiative, mm-hmm. um, and that's something that I've been witnessing for the last year and a half as I've been your new state auditor. Um, And I am, you know, still new. I feel like it's, you know, because I've been on the campaign trail essentially for so long at this point, people are kind of like, you know, she's been there forever. I've I've been in for just over a year and a half. (laughs) It just feels forever to those who hate you. It feels like it's been a long, long time. (laughs) But I will tell you that, um, you know, folks like Jim Lyons and Jamie Eldridge coming together, you know, speaks volumes Those two guys don't even say hi to each other. Speaks volumes about how much people want to make sure that we are increasing transparency and accountability Mm -hmm. up on Beacon Hill Mm -hmm. in the form of whether it's public records reform, uh, making sure that people are following the open meeting law, uh, making sure that those bills aren't getting voted on or not even voted on in the middle of the night. Jamie's contribution was so important because we weren't even thinking electronic. We were thinking we had to change the public records law because there's no teeth in the law. So Willie Lantigua was saying to me, well, you can get all the court judgments that you want. There's no or if in the law, so I'm just going to keep not giving it to you. Mm. So when we wrote it to put the penalties in, Jamie came along and said, well, wait a minute, why don't we make it so that most of these public records are online, make it mandatory to put them online so you don't even have to request half of these laws. Mm. So now anything financial that the city of Lawrence, the city of Methuen does, any contracts, they all have to go online. So a lot of that stuff, the public doesn't even have to ask for anymore because of Jamie, because of mm-hmm. Jamie's amendments that went into that bill. Mm-hmm. And I was, again, we agree on nothing. Like, we agree on nothing. He's like a right-wing lunatic. I'm a, uh, he's a left-wing lunatic. I'm a right-wing lunatic. And literally on social issues, on financial issues, we agree on nothing. But we all agree that government needs to be held responsible. And I was, and I was, I was really humbled that someone like you and him, someone like... Uh, Bruce Tarr and Jim Lyons could all work on a bill like that and work together and do it successfully. Mm-hmm. I think it's important that we come together about these good government issues. Look, I, you you know you know I'm a, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I know how much you love that about me. But what I will tell you, I don't is mind that, that you're a Democrat. It's it's all the it's all the platitude stuff. It's all the pandering to like the groups that you go girl and you know it's like it's all the well, it's all me, that stuff that all politicians kind of have to do. But I just to, I hate it so much because I used to be an elected official and I refused to do it. Well, to the point that that I wanted to make about it is, you know, I was. Um, um, in Boxford last night at their Republican town committee meeting. Republicans love where, where Ipswich was mm-hmm. and all the local Republicans. I think there were like six or seven local Republican town committees there. And, you know, I, I went, I talked about some of the issues and it was, it, it was, in, it was really inspirational. I have to tell you to um, sit and to be able to talk uh, with people who most likely didn't vote for me mm-hmm. and, you know, might not vote for me again if a, if a, if a good Republican ends up running. But, you know, I, I think that it's important to talk about uh, these things across party lines and to let people know, look, yes, we're going to disagree. Mm-hmm. We're going to disagree on stuff. But where we can agree, we really need to make sure that we're coming together. Otherwise, the power structure on Beacon Hill... Rules of the day. Right. And, okay. that, and, and, and what you're talking about is the reason I left the Republican Party. Because when Katie Ives was our state senator, she had a measure to put photo ID on EBT cards. So it would cut down on fraud. And I brought her to a Tea Party meeting, and they wouldn't let her speak. Mm-hmm. And I said, wait a minute. We've been crying about f- fraud forever in the welfare department. Here's a Democrat who can actually get it done because she's a Democrat. She can get it done where Republicans can't. 
let her speak. Let her talk to us about how we can help her get well, this done. And they wouldn't let her. They wouldn't let her speak. And that was the day. The next day, I went down and I unenrolled from as a Republican. I left the Republican Party that day. The, the, the reasoning behind why people want, you know, transparency could differ. You know, mm -hmm. the uh, you know, and, and and I don't want to ascribe intent to, to anybody for for why they want that to happen. But we all want accountability mm -hmm. in our system, right? I mean, for someone like me. My mom, you know, had to rely on social services. She was only 17 when she got pregnant with me. Mm -hmm. You know, she was just a baby herself and needed a lot of help. We got help. But thank God I, I have a big family. You know, I have a lot of cousins, a lot of aunts and uncles. They all pitched in, but she definitely had to rely on some of those social services. So for someone like me, you know, it's not because I don't want people to be able to get access to services like health care or like the food stamps or like, you know, SNAP benefits or whatever it is or housing assistance. It's because... You know, uh, we want to make sure that those people who truly need it mm -hmm. actually have a chance mm -hmm. to get it because right. there are limited resources. And that's why I loved Suzanne Bump, the woman you replaced, because we would sit down at China Blossom after a, a chamber event. And she would say to me, you know, Tom, you and I agree on way more than we disagree. You want to stop fraud because you want to give money back to the taxpayers. I want to stop fraud because I think there are more people that need that money who are, who are poor and indigent. And maybe we can come to the middle. Maybe we can come to an agreement. But we should both be working on stopping the fraud. Yeah, we both agree that it's wrong right. to fraudulently receive benefits right. that you are not entitled to. And mm -hmm. that that takes away from somebody, whether it's, you know, or it's, it takes away from both. It takes away from both the taxpayer and the other person who actually really does genuinely need right. those services. Those are policy discussions that happen, but the accountability piece right. is the issue that we come together on here. And I have to tell you, you know, um, to your point about just, you know, the Republican Party and the EBT card uh, issue, I actually had the, 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 the mass GOP recently call on me to audit EBT cards, and I was happy to be able to respond back that, we were actually already auditing. Already doing it, right. We were already auditing, um, you know, the issues that they were concerned about. But we still said, hey, you know, to the um, – there was a candidate who called who wanted to make sure that, you know, we were looking at this. It was part of her platform. Um, and I said, look, you know, we're happy to meet with you. Uh, we were already looking at this. However, if you have specific things that you'd like to raise to my audit team – let us know mm -hmm. uh, because we're all concerned about the waste, fraud, and abuse. And I don't want any child who's in need of services to suffer right. because somebody is stealing money from that family who needs it and from the taxpayers who fund this important program. So we are in this together. And um, it's been, like I said, really inspiring to, since I took this office in particular uh, to see so many people from the left, from the right, coming together and being able to work to get things done. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Let's talk about, we've got, believe it or not, only 12 minutes left. Oh. Um, let's talk about question one. Um, I have spent at least two separate shows explaining to people why you're doing what you're doing on question one. So you don't really have, unless you don't, unless you want to, no, you really have to. to go into all the details of, of how you got here, but give them a little bit of a flavor in case they didn't see those shows and then explain to them why it's so critical that they vote yes on question one. So question one is only something that you need to go vote yes on because the Speaker and Senate President refuse to comply with the current law that already mandates that I audit every state department. All right, let, uh, me, let me stop you there, yes. and I hate to because I know you're going to be on a roll here, but it's okay. it, it, to me, this is like immigration. If we pass another law while they're ignoring the current law, what good is passing a new law going to be? So this puts the power in the hands of the people to put pressure on the state house because they've been able to, up to this point, essentially get away with trying to just make the focus on me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's why you'll see some lovely hit pieces on me recently. And oh, I know. I was things. laughing so hard when I yeah, saw yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's par like for the course. Anybody who knows you thinks that that's just hilarious. It's, it's par for the course, you know, and you get thick skin by this point. But I have to say, their, you know, sort of strategy in trying to get people to vote no and get people not to agree with the audit is by trying to, you know, they're running a campaign Trash against you. me. right. You know, it's like, oh, well, she sucks. She's this. She that she can't do blah 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 you know and regardless of what you think about me and regardless of whether or not you voted for me if I choose to run again if you vote for me in the future whatever it is I'm not on the ballot right. <laughs> but but they are but, but they are but legislative leaders want you to think that I'm on the ballot right. no my friends um transparency is on 
the ballot. Basic de tenements of democracy are on the ballot. They'd like you to believe that they have a democratic process up there because they have a D next to their name. Mm -hmm. No, it's an authoritarian regime right. in the House of Representatives in the state Senate right now, And yet these are the people that lecture us about saving democracy from Donald Trump and saving democracy from Republicans. And they're always railing against someone else to take the focus off what they're doing. And what they're doing is no different, it's no better, than what they're accusing other people of doing. I mean, they, they tried to kill your, your measure when you tried to stop them from um, having the non-disclosure, like outlawing non-disclosure agreements. They fought you hard on that. And now they're fighting you hard on just auditing their books. And I don't think what people at home understand is you're not necessarily asking to audit all of the money that they, that they vote on to spend out for the budget. You're trying to audit how much money do they allocate to their own office for their own out-of-state travel, what they spend, what the individual senators and, and state reps spend, and that gets lost in all of these, these hit pieces and everything else. Most people don't understand what it is you're trying to audit. You're trying to audit them, not the state budget. Not, you're trying to audit them. Did they spend money to pay off some poor girl who was sexually abused in the state house? And was paid to, to go away and keep their mouth quiet. So I think that anybody who has questions about what the audit consists of, because it I don't want people to get confused, I'm just so I want to clear this up. We don't audit individual legislators or any individual mm -hmm. in the Commonwealth. We don't audit, audit their personal finances. I have had folks ask me, can you audit their, you know, personal bank accounts, see how they're spending, even right. their campaign finance stuff, Office of Campaign and Political Finance does that. And they do a good job. They're one of the they few do. state agencies that do a good <laughs> they job. They really do. And that, that's their role is to do that. That's not the Office of State Auditor. What the Office of State Auditor does in line with, you know, sort of what you're, 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 po you're pointing out is that <clears throat> the money that they control is mm. I think a, a way that I would say it, the money that they control for their own budget right. in the Senate, in the House of Representatives, not you know, the whole budget at large for the state of Massachusetts. We audit every state entity that we can in the time that we're given with the very limited resources that we get from our state legislature who's retaliated against us mm -hmm. uh, in recent years and significantly underfunded well, they're, they're our budget. Well, they're the corrupt good old boys. They're the corrupt good old boys and... God bless you for taking them on. And we can audit how they enter into these non-disclosure agreements mm -hmm. like we did at the Convention Center Authority where we identified a $1.2 million unlawful NDA that was given to a woman at the Convention Center. We can't do that in the State Senate or in the House of Representatives right, right now. They won't let us see. And it's not just us in the auditor's office that they won't let see. It's all the taxpayers. We can't get access, Tom, to basic financial documentation like receipts to just back up their claimed expenditures. They'll say, well, we have all of our expenditures up online. They do have Some what, expenditures. Their, what their claimed expenditures right. are up online. They have the transactions listed and what the general, the general amount was mm -hmm. overall, but it's not itemized. Right. There are no receipts that are required to be produced for that. We go into the University of Massachusetts, like we just did at UMass Lowell, for example. Kudos to UMass Lowell. We found a couple of discrepancies, not really a big deal, but we were able to uh, audit them with their full cooperation, where they gave us all their receipts in the spirit of transparency and said, you're here to do your job. Uh, and they gave us their receipts, and we were able to match anything that, you know, um, or we were able to reconcile any differences between mm -hmm. what the receipt stated and what was actually claimed, and they were able to fix any of those even minor errors and make sure that they were fully documenting how they're spending our taxpayer dollars. And we were able to make sure that that was all being done on the up and up. The legislature is refusing to let us even see their receipts. I mean, just their financial receipts, mm -hmm. and what they're trying to claim is this bogus constitutional argument where they're saying essentially, and they have a couple of their friends who, who want us to believe that they're experts on these things, who are essentially going around on behalf of the speaker and on behalf of the Senate president, uh, saying that they're smarter than everybody else. They're smarter than the Office of State Auditor. They're smarter than our general counsel. They're smarter than all of the auditors throughout history who conducted over 100 audits of the state legislature Love up it. until recent years. This is why they hate you. Because you can't, because they can't get away with lying. No, and, and what they're trying to claim, Tom, is that we're violating the Constitution by providing some oversight to how our tax dollars are being spent. Right. Complete B. 
BS. Total Let nonsense. me tell you why. It's the easiest argument to dismiss. And it, it's been underreported, to be honest with you, because I understand, you know, look, they've been doing a really great job at confusing people who aren't, you know, sitting well, the there the reading, media's, reading the Constitution 24 7. Right, but the media is clearly on the side of the establishment Democrats. We know that in, on Beacon Hill. We, I, mean, I have to tell you, you know. How is the look, Boston Globe treating you? My interactions, uh, you know, with the press have been, you know, not probably different than the majority of other elected officials, okay? But I do have to tell you something. Uh, we might not always agree. You know, uh, the, you just saw a couple of pieces come out this week that mm -hmm. I was not in agreement with, you know, some of the statements that were made. Um, I will tell you this. The media, by and large, on this particular issue is to be credited on this issue. Not everyone is in agreement. We did have a couple of you know, news sources say that they don't agree with this. And that, I want to know where the Boston Globe stands. The Boston they're, Globe they're endorsed the, this. They did. The Boston Globe endorsed this wow. and the Boston Herald endorsed this. Well, we this. expect it from the Herald. And that, let me tell you this. The Globe both endorsing those, you is huge. But <laughs> both of those newspapers endorsed against me for state auditor. Right. <laughs> so I didn't get the endorsement in the primary. I also didn't get the endorsement in, in the, the general. Final. But here we are, folks, and, you know, <laughs> I want to thank the Merrimack Valley for coming out strong. Uh, for well, they don't sure have to that. like you, but they have to respect the work that you're doing, and I say that to people who don't like me all the time. Listen, you can, you can not like me, but respect my job, respect that I have to do it. Or, or let's just make sure that we're talking about the issues, right? You know, the personal attacks and the character assassinations by legislative leaders right now on me personally, and it's not limited limited to me. They do it to anybody who stands. Anybody who stands. Everybody who stands. You know, out. but in this particular circumstance, I have repeatedly have to ha had to move people to back to the audit. They will say she this, she that, she this, she that, and I sit there and go, this is about transparency, accountability, right. accessibility. I actually love our state legislature. I just also happen to love transparency and accountability. Right. Why do those things have to be mutually exclusive right. to the Senate President and the Speaker? If, you if, know, if, I work if, very well with our local legislative delegation here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we always agree. I work very well with them. They work very well with me. You will see me at events talking to Senator Payano, talking to Representative Hamilton, Representative Reyes, all the folks that you know are around here. Mm -hmm. We don't agree on everything. You'll see us disagree on other issues, you know, or even this issue potentially. But I will tell you this, you know, we we have love for the fact that we're trying to forward, you know, really important issues on behalf of the Merrimack Valley up on Beacon Hill together. And you don't have to agree with everything in order to uh, love the community that you get to serve through these positions mm -hmm. and to, you know, really have love for the people themselves. I say this often. I actually, I have a lot of respect for the Speaker and Senate President on different areas, on different areas. Well, they don't have any respect for you. That's pretty I, I got to tell you this, though. It's, they it's, do not like it's, Diana to talk, Leo. Well, right now, you know, it's, it's okay. It is what it is, you know. It's when you run for these offices, you just kind of expect that. But, you know, I respected the Senate President so much when she brought forward my, the first amendment that I ever filed, and it's fitting that it was the first amendment, and it was the first amendment on the rules package that year that banned non-disclosure agreements in the state Senate. Mm -hmm. And she knew that I had just broken my non-disclosure agreement in the House of Representatives. She saw what happened over there. She saw the bullying that had occurred. And when I went to the Senate, it was the first amendment I, I filed on the, on the Senate rules package that I wanted to ban NDAs in the state Senate. And she helped me to pass that. That's great. And, I, and I'll never forget that. You know, but that was then. <laughs> that was then, and this is now. Subsequently, <laughs> we had some disagreements because you know I wanted I wanted to be able to read bills before we had to vote on them, and I wanted to be Ima able to talk to my constituents. Imagine. I wanted public hearings to happen. How before. are you a Democrat? I listen but, to everything you're saying, and it goes against everything your party stands for. Like that's process not true. wise, no, process wise, that's they not don't true. want you to read the bills. They want to attack gonna, people personally. I'm going I'm to interject here. You know, and, and one of the reasons why you said you left the Republican Party, right? Right. The, this this is not a Democrat Republican issue, but let me tell you something. The Democratic State Committee, even though the chair of the Democratic State Committee is not my biggest fan, and tried to block me from speaking at our own convention, okay, which I ended up speaking because we made some noise about it. The Democratic State Committee, even in the face of the establishment saying do not support what she's doing, those activists. Those people that are on the ground, that are writing the postcards, that are the ones out there holding the signs that we and see. And writing the checks. They, and writing the checks. They, they did help to fund the ballot right. question, and I was grateful for it. And, you know, some could only donate $5, but we were very grateful for mm -hmm. it. 
they actually endorsed this ballot question crazy. to audit the legislature. Uh, well, they audit, you know, they 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 endorsed the the initiative to audit the legislature. The GOP endorsed the initiative to audit the legislature alongside of the um, group Act on Mass, which is a left-leaning organization for good government, and then the right-leaning group. Uh, right here from the Merrimack Valley, the Mass Fiscal Alliance. Mm -hmm. They're all supporting this. So the and Democrats. They, and they really hate you. Mass Fiscal Alliance so really hates you. We're working together on this right now. That's you know? crazy. I mean, you. You have realigned all of all of the usual suspects on Beacon Hill, and those, regardless of party, regardless of ideology, those who really believe in good government have gravitated to you, and the good old boys and those who don't want anyone to know what they're really doing behind closed doors are standing with leadership. And you're almost kind of like the Donald Trump. I hate to make this analogy because I know everybody flips out when you mention Donald Trump. But you're almost like the Donald Trump of, of Massachusetts in the fact that your very existence and what you're trying to do is making everybody else realign around you. And I admire that. I admire that a lot. It's not often when at the state level someone comes along and everyone else has to realign themselves to that one person. I mean, I'm going to be voting against Donald Trump. I'm sure you are. Strongest Listen, I'm, sh term. I'm sure you are. You're um, going to go D down uh, the ticket. But I'm just talking about st strategy-wise. If you look at, did you ever think you'd see Liz Cheney campaigning for Kamala Harris? Never in, in a million years. Did you ever think that you'd see a Tulsi Gabbard supporting a Donald Trump? Never in a million years. But his very existence on the national political scene has realigned everything, like him or not, and your existence on the state scene has realigned everything, like you or not. And I, and I think sometimes that's needed in the political process. People get, too, people get too entrenched in the way things are and who's on their side and who's not on their side, and that breeds corruption. Most times. I'll tell you something that it has been actually... I know you hated everything I just said. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, I, I think it's, it's important to talk about the fact that I, as a Democrat, um, and supporting my Democratic values, mm -hmm. also being a Merrimack Valley woman born and raised... Democrat. Um, I will tell you, Democrat, and you Democrat, are going to disagree Democrat, with me Democrat, on some Democrat, of these Democrat, things. Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. It's I the only time you, she can work it into the story. I will tell you the difference is there's not all that volatility and uh, there aren't uh, personal attacks. Uh, there are not, uh, you know, the, the shady conversations going on uh, between the advocacy groups that are supporting something like this. Mm -hmm. Whereas at the federal level, um, you know, that's a different story. Locally here, we all know each other. Mm -hmm. Locally here, it's not about Democrat, Republican with this. Again, accountability is something we all want. Mm -hmm. And I do want to be clear, just because people who happen to have D next to their name, who are up at the state house, oppose this. That is not reflective of rank and file Democrats in the legislature. It's also not reflective of local Democrats, unenrolled Republicans, Libertarians, Green Rainbow Party people here in the Merrimack Valley or get, across Massachusetts. If you get this passed, that's what people in power want to right, do. Right. Right. Everybody and, else wants access to the documents that people in power are holding from all of us, whether we're Democrat or Republican. Yeah, but they're all Democrats. And if you get this passed, doesn't the legislature still have to approve it? Doesn't it still have to go back to them in order to actually become a law? Like, once you get this passed on the ballot, don't they still get the final say at the end of the day? Like, aren't we still screwed? So, should we give up on all the good things that we're fighting for? I think that for? means yes. Oh, my God. It's still true. Here's what I will. Here's what I'll say. They are trying to essentially um, keep people from thinking that their vote matters right now by signaling that, well, they're probably just going to overturn it. And it was like what they're doing with question two, you know, as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, we think this, so, you know, there's a chance we could overturn the will of the voters. Right. So they're saying that about question one, which is the audit of the legislature. They're saying it about question two. And they're basically trying to signal to people that democracy isn't something that they're concerned about. But I thought the Democrats were supposed to save democracy. The leadership team up at the state house again might have a d next to their name but they are operating with unfettered authority and unchecked power right and they need to respect the right. will of the people and they are not signaling that they're going to do so so i'm going to say what we need to do is we need to go we need to vote our conscience we need to show up at the polls on november 5th and we need to let them know very clearly how we feel about what is going on up there and the fact that we are demanding transparency. Mm -hmm. An audit won't be able to save everything that's happening up there. Of course not. It's right. an audit. It's not, you know, we're not the FBI, uh, though that's what they want people to believe. Right. We are able to go in. Well, that's what they're worried about. They're, wor they're worried if you expose it, 
that the FBI might be getting involved somewhere down the line because every, every job I have ever worked at, I've worked at a lot of jobs. I've had a lot of jobs in my lifetime. And every job that I've ever had that allowed us to do expenses, if nobody was going over what we were turning in for our lunch expenses, for our travel expenses, everyone fudged them, everyone cheated, everyone bumped them up to more than they were supposed to be because it was just free money. It was free money that no one was going to be able, no one was going to look at, no one was going to hold us accountable for in every job I've ever had. So what makes anyone think the legislature is any different? What makes you think? I mean, if 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 a state rep goes out and and submits a five hundred dollar travel allowance and say I spent five hundred dollars traveling this month, and nobody's overlooking that, the public doesn't get to see that. They can fudge it all they want, and no one's ever going to know. They're just going to stick it. it oh, I'm not saying they're stealing because I'm pretty sure they are, but I'm not going to say they're stealing. But stopping you from auditing them means they'll never get caught if they do, and Let that's the problem. Let me tell you something here, because I think this is an important point to make when um, you know we end up voting for this in just, what, four days now on November 5th. The legislature audits the executive branch. It's been underreported. Right. The legislature audits the executive branch. Right. They have a post-audit and oversight committee chaired by a one Senator Pacheco right now, who's a dear friend, <laughs> who's the guy who served the longest in the state Senate. And who does not support your bill. He absolutely does. <laughs> oh, he, he does? He has endorsed question one. Get the hell out. Yep. Wow. And he's on his way out the door. And he said the other day, you know, I remember when I actually required that the former auditor come before my committee when I was the chair of post audit and oversight committee during the big dig wow. project. He said, and we were investigating all the shenanigans that went on during the big dig. And I said, I want the auditor to come here and talk to us about what they found in their reports. And the auditor had to go to that hearing and sit there and testify because the Post Audit and Oversight Committee has audit authority over the executive branch. They have done oversight hearings from the legislature over the MBTA, the Holyoke Soldiers Home tragedy that mm -hmm. we know about that we occurred. Covered that extensively. How did they do that if there's some separation of powers right. that says that the legislature and executive branch can't provide any oversight right. to each other. They are violating their own separation of powers argument by even having that committee. If you go look at all the reports they've done, mm -hmm. some of those old, old reports, Tom, actually say that they had legislative auditors and it talks about all the documents that they required the executive branch to produce. So all they're saying is an audit for thee, but not for me. And they are trying to make up bogus constitutional uh, excuses that don't hold water. They very much audit the executive branch. They just don't want to be audited back. So they're right, saying, right. oh, you know, you can't do it. We, we make our own rules. You can make your own rules. But I get to audit those rules. That's the way it goes. I so hate, I hate to, to say forward. that we're out of time, but we've been out of time for a while. And th Chrissy, thank you for being patient with me. This is the second week in a row. Did you see my show last week? I had the guy from uh, uh, The Sopranos on. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't see it. Yeah, check it out. L L Lilo, Lilo Brancato. He was in NYPD Blue. He was in, the, uh, he was in not Goodfellas. He was in The Sopranos. And then he was in um, Bro a Bronx Tale. He was the star of A Bronx Tale. And he's going on helping people. He was, used to be addicted. He's doing addiction addiction talks around the Merrimack Valley. Brandy Carter brought him down, so it was a great show. So it's two weeks in a row that I've gone over, so I'm going to have to owe, I'm gonna have to owe lunch to Chrissy at some point for helping me do that. Any final, very, very quick last words? We want everyone to vote yes on one, uh, and then when it's over, we want everyone to pressure their local state legislators not to kill it. That's exactly right. Uh, yes on one, bring on the sun because sunlight is the best disinfectant. <laughs> uh, and I just want to say thank you. Measures. Now, I want to thank you, Tom, for, for having me on the show. And I think that, you know, uh, it's just what we talked about, just some great examples of people crossing party lines, um, working in a nonpartisan fashion to do what's good and what's the right thing, right? And I think that we need more of that in mm -hmm. Massachusetts. And I think conversations like this, even with folks who don't always agree uh, on other items on the ticket, potentially, I think we can all agree on question one uh, on this, this issue that I hope, you know, during the holiday season when people are probably still going to be arguing about you know, what occurs at the, the top of the ticket this mm -hmm. year. Uh, when, when people start having maybe a little bit too much wine and telling you what they really think, um, feel, free to bring up, up, feel free to bring up uh, the question one, the audit of the legislature, because that's sure to get everyone to agree. You can roll up, Mel Christie. Thank you very much, state auditor, former state senator, former state representative, Diana DeLago. And I missed you. I missed you. You've been so busy going all over the state that I haven't had a chance to, we haven't had a chance to go to Salvatore's lately. 
So maybe we can do that once this election is over and it's in the rear view mirror. Let's do it. And, and, and thank your, uh, your aide who's here with you today. Sam, good job, Sam. Sam, Sam is here <laughs> with us. And my intern, Carlotta, is here today, too. So, oh, awesome. So maybe, well, are you, are you hungry? Oh, you're, you're not hungry. You just, you just ate. I just had I had two right. cheeseburgers, okay. full disclosure. Your spicy chicken sandwich is sitting right over there. Thank you very much. I want to thank our sponsors. <laughs> Boy, did you guys get your money's worth today, because our numbers are going to be through the roof. McLennan Real Estate, Century 21, the Zanny Pesh Law Office, Marston & Son Construction, EIS, Investigation and Gun Training, Bonfire Wellness Center, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, AFC Urgent Care, Pleasant Valley Landscaping Contractors, uh, ANJ Goodwin Plumbing, Enterprise Bank, Chris's Barbershop, Prime Insurance at Doug McCurio Law Office, and Better Burger Bar and Harrison's Roast Beef in North Andover. Thank you, Chrissy, for letting us go over. Thank you very much for coming in, sweetheart. I missed you. Diana, great to Diana, see you, Tom. <laughs> another Democrat. Go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.